Today we make Easter windmills, Easter bookmarks, Easter baskets and an Easter bunting chain. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to make one of these windmills and they rotate if you blow them. They're nice to stick outside in summer. Um, to make a windmill much like this, you just need some paper. You need a drawing pin. Uh, I've used a chopstick. You could use a doweling rod for the back. So first up, what you need to do is get a piece of paper. Now I'm using wrapping paper. I think it's really cool to use wrapping paper because it's already got a pattern on it. Um, so it already looks pretty by design, but you can use any paper. You could use colored paper, just paper you have knocking around the house and maybe draw a picture on it with felt pens and make it look snazzy. Next, what you need to do is draw out a square of 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. You need to get your scissors and get cutting. Obviously, uh, scissors are sharp if you're not used to using them or if you're not allowed to. Get a grown up to help with this part, and then you should end up right with a square much like this one here. Now, the next thing you need to do is we're going to rule some lines going to the center, so diagonal lines of about seven to eight centimeters um, from the corners to the center. Now, to help you do this a bit. Uh, what you could do is put your diagonal corners on top of each other and just put an ever so slight fold in the middle. Just ever so slight, just so that you've got something to work along. And then all you need to do is cut along the lines you've ruled so that you can get ready to fold your windmill shape inwards. There we go. We've got a shape like this. Next, you need some sticky tape and we're gonna stick our corners in from the middle. So it's good to get a little tab, maybe two tabs of tape ready. They don't need to be big at all. I've got two tiny little tabs there. And then what we're gonna do is get our corners and fold them in on each section so I've done two there. I'll stick those two down. There we go. So I've got two stuck down. Then I'm gonna go for the next two. And then more or less, my windmill has begun to take shape. And always make sure that you do the same side of each of your triangular sections, because otherwise you'll end up with two bits sticking in next to each other and you want every other bit sticking in. So that is our basic windmill shape you'll see. Next, what you need to do is get a chopstick or a doweling rod and a drawing pin. Now these are pretty sharp and um, they might be hard to push in to whatever your stick is. You could just get an actual stick from the garden uh, or from the park. Um, and then we're just going to use our drawing pin to push it in. Now, I've got cheap chopsticks, so my drawing pin goes in pretty easily. But if yours is a bit difficult, and if yours is playing hard to stick in, then get a grown-up to help you. Now, let's give it a blow and see if it works. Pretty cool, huh? Now I'm gonna show you how to make some Easter bookmarks. I'm gonna make a little bunny and a little chick. And these are so simple to make. Just uh, get some old envelopes um, of any color, but the color could be yellow if you're making a chick or white if you're making a bunny. So I'm gonna make a bunny first. I've got a white envelope here. And then all you need to do is cut the bottom corner off to the size of how big your bookmark is going to be. So that makes a little triangular hat. So for a bunny, we need bunny ears. So I'm gonna cut out two bunny ear shapes. You can do that from either a white sticker or use just white paper and 
glue your ears onto your bunny. So there we go. Two little bunny ears like that. And then stick them on to the corners of your bookmark. Here we go. Oh, bit of a wonky bunny. There we are. Wonky is endearing. And then all you need to do is draw your bunny's face. So if you've got googly eyes, you could put googly eyes. I'm just going to draw little black eyes. And then it's always good to give a bunny a little round pink nose. And then little bunny whiskers. And then more or less your bunny bookmark is done. How is that? For the um, chick bookmark, it's much the same thing. Now, I don't have any yellow paper. It would be perfect if I had yellow paper. So I'm going to use white and then colour it yellow to be my chick. So just get a yellow felt pen and it should look something like that. I'm just going to put two little circles so that it matches my little rabbit. And then a little orange beak. I've drawn a triangle and I'm literally going to colour that orange. And basically, that is as easy as it gets to make your bookmark. There I've got a little chick, Easter chick. There I've got a little Easter bunny. And now I can mark two pages in my book. There we go. And you'll never lose your place ever again. The bunny one is really cool because obviously it's got ears that stick out so you can find your page really quickly. If you did want to, you could always make a little feathery chick tail. Here I've managed to find a yellow feather. They're not easy to come by, but you could easily make um, uh, a tail just by cutting out a tail. So if you stick it on the back, then that makes a bookmark that sticks out. Oh, what page am I on? Oh, I know. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you how to make a little Easter basket to put your it's eggs great, in. great, plain or decorated with stickers. And so for this, you'll need a piece of paper. I'm using an A4 piece of paper, but it depends on how big you want to make your basket. It's going to be a wicker basket. Um, so I think plain is better, but you could use a plain wrapping paper or a simple wrapping paper if you want to make a bigger basket. And then you need to get a box that's going to be the size of your basket, um, roughly. It can be shorter than your basket, so I could make my basket a bit taller. But the actual size of the, the width and the sides needs to be the same as how your basket will be. So imagine two little handles here. That will be the size of my basket. And then, much like you're wrapping a present, you need to wrap your paper around your box. Now, you know how to wrap the ends of a present. If you don't, a parent can help you. But um, it's all about getting the corners into triangle shapes and then sealing it up, just like that. And then I'm going to put another bit of tape there to hold it in place. It's like I've wrapped a birthday present for someone. There we go. And if you score along the edges, it will be a nice defined shape. Then what you need to do is slip out your light bulb. So I'm going to cut this down. If your paper's not the right size, you can cut it down to size. Um, I'm going to cut this down to the size of the Easter basket that I want. So that is my Easter basket size. And then we're going to do some weaving. So what you've got to do now is cut some slits. Uh, strips as it were so your basket has got a fringe and that might seem a bit strange but all will become clear there we go so I've cut a sort of fringe on my basket and then what you need to do is get paper of a contrasting color 
and cut some strips of the same length. So that is what I'm about to do now. And the strips need to be the same width as the strips you've cut off your bag roughly, uh, your bag, your basket roughly. And that is so you can weave it in and out and get a sort of checkerboard style. Gonna thread it one over, one under, one over, one under, and then I push it down to the bottom. There we go. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing over again, but I'm gonna go the other way. Same again, and oop, and then pull it down as far as it will go. And we start getting a lovely checkerboard effect. Then one more strip, one oh, under, over, under, over. And there you'll see that you've got a lovely wicker effect. Cut off any loose ends, there we are, and then you can stick your ends down. Your fringe can go right to the bottom, in fact, mine hasn't. And I'm just gonna do the other side now quickly. So I'm repeating the same process on the other side now and alternating over, under, over, under, pull my strip down. So once you have done all your weaving, stick down any loose bits or any ends like this one here that aren't quite held in place. Now for the handles, you could use a bit of ribbon or a bit of string, um, anything that you've got knocking around that's a bit handle-like. I'm gonna use this ribbon here and all you need to do is cut two equal sized handles, Doo -doo -doo, just like that. And then you can stick them in place with a bit of sticky tape. There we are, one handle done. There we go. Now what you need to do is just cut a bit of paper that's the same size as the base of your basket. Uh, or a little bit smaller in width even, and then push it to the bottom of your basket and glue it in. You could use cardboard, and that gives a sturdy base. I don't have any Easter eggs, so I'm filling mine today with pom-poms. <laughs> there we go, one Easter basket full of pom-poms. So now I'm gonna show you how to make some Easter bunting. It's really easy. You just need a bit of string, or you could use ribbon or raffia like I've got here. And then you need to make everything to decorate on your bunting. So first, get a piece of paper and then a circle to draw around. And we're gonna cut that out. Okay, so I've started to cut out my circle and I'm going to make a sheep first or rather a lamb because Easter's all about the beginning of spring and basically that's when lambs are born. So all of the pieces of flag as it were on our bunting are just going to be made out of circles of paper. Here's some circles that I've already cut out. I'm going to show you how to make a chick a sheep, a bunny, and a pig. You'll need some black card or black paper to cut out a sheep's head. I have gone for something a bit like that. Can you see that? That's my little sheep's face. And you need to stick that on with glue. You could alternatively just draw a sheep's face on your body. There we go. And then next, you need to give your sheep some eyes. I've got these little googly eyes that I'm gonna use. But you could draw the sheep's eyes onto the head, then color around in black, and that would work really nicely. There we go. There's my sheep, he's looking a bit cross-eyed, isn't he? Uh, and then, this is a lamb, I keep calling him a sheep or her, right, then what you can do is draw little legs on or stick some little legs on. I'm gonna 
stick some little legs on. They only need two legs, uh, so one on each side of the body. One, because we're looking at the front of the sheep. Obviously, sheep uh, lambs have four legs. I've got to stop calling my lamb a sheep. There we go. So there's uh, a lovely sheep's body. And then for a finishing touch, you can just stick some cotton wool on, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So our little friend is fluffy. Here we go. Just a bit of cotton wool, making sure not to cover up our little friend's face. Um, and if we do cover his face, that's a bit covered there. Give, give, give him a haircut. Snip it round in a circle so that it's nice and neat. I'm shearing my sheep. So that is my finished sheep. It's pretty easy. And now I'll show you how to do some of the other animals. Uh, next, I'm gonna do a chick. So a chick is really, really simple. Just two little eyes. You can use googly eyes again. And uh, I'm just gonna draw my chick eyes today. So just two black circles for eyes, a little beak. And there, we've got a chick. I'm gonna color the beak in orange. And also you can add little wings. You can either put feathers on as wings or what you could do, woo, is cut two little slits at the side. And that can be little chick wings like that and just pull them out a bit so they are a bit separate from the body of your chick. And there we go, we've got a chick to play with our little sheep. Now I'll show you how to do the other animals. The bunny is two little eyes, much like our bookmark, little pink nose. You could do a smiley bunny mouth. So for a bunny, I've just done a little pink nose, a smile, whiskers and eyes. And then I'm going to stick on two bunny ears. Right, I've just stuck on two little bunny ears there. And you can get a pink pen and draw the inside of the ear for a bit of detail or definition. You don't have to. You can decorate your bunny how you want and there we go bunny is ready to join his little friends so next up i'm going to do our pig so that's a pink circle that you need and then you need to get two little piggy ears and they're triangles you could just draw little triangle ears i'm sticking some on with some scissors it's totally up to you and then i'm gonna give my pig some little piggy trotters, which are just literally squares. Once again, you can draw the little trotters on if you want, or stick some on. I'm sticking it on so that it's got an overlapping effect coming off the edge of my circle. So we've got something like that. Uh, let me just do a better job of this foot. There we go. And now I'll just draw two piggy eyes and a little piggy nose. And there we go. There we have a little pig. I give him a little piggy smile as well. Happy pig. So now we're ready to put all our little circle animals onto our bunting string. So I'm just going to show you all the animals I've done before I stick them onto my string. A little chick there, so then a little sheep. They're all just made out of circles. And then a little piggy, and then a little bunny. And now I'm going to stick them, just with bits of sticky tape, onto my string. Okay, so if you look closely, you can see that I've stuck my little animals on with bits of sticky tape. And if I turn it around, you can see the finished product. How cool is this little bunting? 
and you can hang it on the wall. Look, I've given that chicken some little chickens, chicky feet, chicky feet. There we go. Our farmyard animals are ready to hang on the wall and this bunting looks so cool. Happy Easter and happy crafting. Please spread the word and subscribe.